Hello. Well, in this video, I am going to start by showing you how to tie spawn sacks. Um, and really, it's made easier by this machine right here. Um, you can buy this at any, depending on where you live, you might have to order it. But um, usually, like Marine General has them, and they're 20 bucks a piece. And let me tell you, they make a huge difference. Uh, for a couple... When I first started, I, I tried to do it the old-fashioned way, and I could, I could do it, but it took forever, and um, I needed something that would get me, you know, 20 spawn sacks in a few in, in a half an hour, which this definitely does. Um, just like any tool, get your own method to make it work right. Um, the way I do it is, it comes with this little deal here, which holds it in place, so I just drilled two little holes on my bench here. I don't know if you can see them. Let me see if I can get over there see my two little holes there and um, so I could take it on and off and I take and I set this in here like this like this and then I just screw this down sometimes I use my power screwdriver just to save time but I'm not going to dig it out because by the time I get it out I could have had this done so This will be a multi-step video again, or a multi-clip video because I'm not going to do everything at once. I don't even have my spawn down here yet. But um, So this is the tool. Once you get that put on there, then you just slide. Let's see if I can get a little bit better shot here. Just slide that tool in there, like so. So now you have your tool right where you need it. So... Um, First step in doing that is, or the first one of the first things you need is um, spawn net tying cord. Uh, I guess you call it, I don't know what you call it, um, thread. I call it thread, magic thread. Um, so what you do is you can buy this. Now I have, you could get, as you can see, I, I've got pretty much every color they make orange chartreuse pink red um, I even have some white which is really hard to find um, I have experimented with other types of thread and that seems to be what I go to the next thing that you need is bait sack floaters um, a lot of guys don't use these I do and they seem to work for me um, it's personal preference. I mean, sometimes I'll not put them in. Sometimes I will. Depends on what I'm doing when I'm making floater spawn sacks. Um, so you got your, you got this here. The next thing that you need is your mesh. Um, you want to get the Atlas stuff. It's soft. Um, a lot, I've I've experimented, and they do make at like uh, if you go to like a hobby store, craft knitting type store, um, like Michaels, they have, um, they sell other kinds of mesh um, for example and this works really good I shouldn't show you guys this but um, this stuff here I don't know if you can see that but it's got flash in it and this netting I mean it's cheaper um, it's a little harder more stiff but the I've, I've used it and the fish don't seem to know and the nice thing about this is is this glows in the dark so I use that quite a bit um, but I do stick with chartreuse I mean I use this stuff here too so if you want to experiment around, I mean, they've got pretty much every color that you can imagine up there um, to try. And it's 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 actually uh, cheaper than buying this, but it's a little stiffer. So sometimes I I wouldn't use it unless, unless I had ample of these um, just because it's a little stiffer. And sometimes the fish get finicky and they won't bite on it if they feel that stiffer sack. Sometimes they're biting so well it doesn't matter. Um, or if the water's really muddy... Um, I guess you have to kind of take advantage of every, everything you can get for them to see it. Um, so I'll use that. So those are the basic things. The next thing I'm going to do is I will go get my eggs and I'll continue the video. So with the spawn tying, um, there's a break here, so bear with me. Um, I went and got my spawn and what I use to, to cure is this right here. It's kind of hard to find. Um, I don't like the, the, 
the non-liquid cures, I guess you'd call them. Um, I like the liquid stuff just because it seems to be a lot less messy and the dye doesn't get everywhere. If you get that powdered um, dye, your your hands, <laughs> you better wear rubber gloves because your hands will be dyed for a long, long time. Uh, been there, done that. So anyway, this is what I use to cure my eggs. Uh, I use the natural color. You can use other colors. Um, I've just always found that since I'm doing spawn sacks with the mesh, it's not really worth it to try to get them a different color. Um, and the fish don't seem to care either way. So I... I use use this stuff. So when you get a hen or you get spawned from a friend that's willing to give it to you, which is hard to find these days, um, the spawn, I mean, not a friend. <laughs> um, anyway, um, these are the eggs. Now, I caught a hen the other night, and I got two jars of these eggs out of one hen. So this spawn will last me for over a year, I bet, or longer. Um, just depends during the season now like we're getting up to the busy time um we're in the busy time if we ever get to fish because of the weather um i will just leave this stuff in the in this can jar um once the season's done if i'm done fishing or whatever the case may be i will take these out of the jar put them in a strainer strain them out i let them sit for maybe 30 minutes um out on a, like a piece of paper towel or newspaper works good as well um, once you get most of the liquid off, just set them, spread them out on there. And then um, once they're kind of dried out by the air, um, what I'll do is I put them into, um, I vacuum seal them with my vacuum sealer. You know, make them into tieable batches and put them in there and then put them in the freezer. And they should, la they'll last you. If you do it right, you'll get, you'll get two years of them sitting there. Because um, I know the ones that I, I just finished up using were from 2012. Um, and they work just fine. So curing them is the key. Um, I, some guys swear by fresh spawn. I can't tell the difference between the cured stuff and the spawn that you just take right out of the, right out of the fish and use. Um, if you take it right out of the fish, especially this time of year, they're so soft and squishy and they pop. Um, so to me, it's more of a hassle to try to deal with that, um, than it is to just cure them and have them ready to go. So what you do, what I do is once I get them in there, uh, one other thing before I go on with that is the, the depending on when you catch the fish, if you catch them now, um, you're going to have, they're going to be in a skein. Uh, they're not going to be loose eggs. Um, so you're going to have to remove them from the skein um, if you want to do it this way. If you catch them in late April, they'll be loose and you'll, I mean, you, you won't have to do anything. I mean, they'll just fall out and you just cure them and you're good to go. So... In that respect, it's better to get a hen later in the season because the eggs will be easier to deal with when you take them out of the fish. So when you take them out of the fish, you're going to have you know two big long skeins um, that they're connected to. So you need to remove the the skein from the from the eggs. The way that I do it is I take um, a, I got to get, get a pot of water. Um, I fill it up pretty full, um, and I made it so my strainer, you know, kitchen strainer fits in the top of it. And what I'll do is I'll take one of the skeins and I'll cut them, cut it up into oh three or four inch slices, um, give or take. And then I will put that water on the stove and bring it to a boil. Turn the stove off, let the boil stop, uh, and then I will dip the eggs into that boiling water for about three minutes. Um, you just kind of got to watch, and you'll know when you don't want to do it too much because you'll cook them but um you just, it, it again once you do it once or twice you'll figure out what you need to do and it'll work um and then once that's done i take them out i run them under cold water cold cold water and um if there's any skein left you can pick it up but most of the time they're pretty they'll get pretty loose um, from the boiling water and the skein will cook right off of them uh, and then you'll have you know good eggs once that's done i dump them in here in a jar like this i fill the jar about two-thirds full um, which is important don't fill it all the way to the top because if you use you know like this cure or any kind of cure those eggs are going to expand so this jar here i've actually already used some out of um to tie up some spawn sacks because i didn't have any left but this right here i filled about two-thirds full and when i went and took the eggs out to make my spawn the, the it was full um you know it was they were to the top so it will expand a lot and you don't want to fill them all the way up because you'll have trouble if you do that um they won't they'll pop so just make sure that you only put two-thirds fill it fill it about two-thirds full about uh you know right here and then put your dye in um your cure in whatever you want to call it and you'll be good to go so that said 
what I do is, let me get my machine set up here, as I explained earlier. So the first step in doing this, oh, one thing I didn't show before as well, let me grab them here. One other thing that you need when you're tying is the mini marshmallows. Um, they last you forever, there's a million of them in a bag, so probably go bad before you ever get to use them. But So, what I do is I take my mini marshmallow, uh, these, these, because I'm tying, tying kind of bigger ones, um, I use these bigger mesh squares. It just makes it easier to deal with. Um, so what you're going to do is you're going to take your mesh square. I got, these are the bigger mesh sizes. I, I use the rolls. Usually if I'm tying for bobber fishing or, or, um, smaller ones, you can use the roll and then just cut it off. You get more material, um, for about the same price. So I've got the big the big thing, uh, the big mesh on there. Um, what I do is I take my, in fact, I've got some here. I'll use this up first. So you get your magic thread. So, and when I'm tying a bunch of spawn, um, I take and I just, I make a bunch of this stuff in one batch so I don't have to keep doing it. But I just take and t cut off, you know, six inches, whatever. Some guys do less. I like to have more string to work with. It makes it easier. So, I cut off a couple pieces of that. Um, got my mesh up here. So what you do is you just take a spoon. You need a spoon. Oh, where's my spoon at? Hold on, gotta find my spoon. Thought I had it. folks so should have had that ready to begin with anyway my spoon actually my daughter's spoon from when she was a kid I saved it because it's the perfect size for what I need to do um, you can use any spoon don't have to use that kind of spoon um, so what I do is now that I've got that sitting there I've got my eggs sitting there um, I take my marshmallow a lot of guys will just put the marshmallow in um, if you're tying by hand, it works a lot better that way. But like for this, in this case, I'm using this machine, so I find it easier to cut the marshmallow in half, um, this this short way, and then so you stick and just stick your marshmallow in there, like so. So you got your marsh, your half a marshmallow in there. Uh, then what you want to do is just you know get out some eggs. Now I like to a lot of times you'll want to I'll strain these eggs, but just because I'm just making one sack here to show you. Um, I'm gonna just grab some eggs out of there. So what I do now, I just put them in there, and you know it depends. You, you use different amounts every time, but you really want to strain these. These aren't strained, so this is gonna be kind of messy. Um, so I just keep putting them in there until I get enough that I, you know, I get enough that I want. I need like so. And you can see this is dripping all over because I didn't strain them. So I'm not going to put any more in there for this video. Um, so once I get the eggs in there, I've got the eggs. Let's see if I can get that closer. I got the eggs and the half marshmallow in. Then I take my other half of my marshmallow and put it in top. Then... Now these these are bigger than what I normally use these floaties. In fact, I put the floaties in. Let me grab my floaty thing here. So I've got a, just a little container here that I put my floaties in, so I don't have to mess with it. So what I'm going to do now, because these are bigger 
And the marshmallow really does help them float, especially if you use a full one. I'm only going to put like two of these in there. And I do it more for visual than anything. I think that chartreuse sticks out really well. Um, you could get them in all different colors, pinks, oranges. Pinks and oranges and chartreuses are the, are the colors, I guess. Um, so now that we have that in there, what I do is... And again, you're going to practice this once you get the, if you use the machine, you'll get your own little system done. But you want to kind of keep it in there. Um, then what you're going to want to do is just take your finger and I just put it on top there. Don't have to do a lot. Um, and then you just pull the lever down like so. Doop. Now, when you're using the bigger spawn mesh like this, and this isn't really that big of a, typically I would make them bigger. Um, but since I'm doing this, it's, uh, this will work just fine. So... And I popped an egg. You'll pop those eggs and it gets kind of messy. You've got to be kind of careful. Um, so what you do with the this, with this string is you just take and you, I start it in the back like so and I bring it out. So it's even on the front side and the back side. And then I just, then you just twist it and give it a pull. Twist it, give it a pull, twist it, give it a pull. Then I take the other string and go the other way. Twist it, give it a pull, twist it, give it a pull, and twist it, give it a pull. Now once I get three on each one, you can do more or less, I, or don't do less, but you could do more, is I take and I just put a half knot in there, just a half knot, and pull that tight. You don't have to do that, I just would rather be safe than sorry um, when it comes to that, because um, you don't want them to come apart when you're fishing, especially when it's icy. They'll get iced up and they won't stay together as well. So I always put the half half knot in there. Um, so then what you do is just take your scissor. Again, good small tiny scissors. As you can see I got a small tiny scissor so you can cut that off real close to the end. Um, once you get your string cut off, what I do is I just wrap this up and I give it a little tug. Just very gently tug it. And then uh, take your scissor, cut it off at the top like so. And voila. You have yourself floating spawn. Now typically when I'm tying, um, I won't put, I won't touch those. Um, I have a jar that I, you know, like a mayonnaise jar. In my case, it's a jar that I had some moonshine in. So <laughs> um, anyway, I will just fill that up with, you know, put like an inch of borax in the bottom. Um, you can get borax at Super One or wherever. Uh, they sell it at Marine General, but they want like twice as much money for a one pound bag you get a huge thing at the grocery store for cheaper um so i've put about you know put about one inch of borax in there and then i just when i've done i just take this machine you know once it's tied stick the jar under there pull this out that way it never touches human hands um not sure how much it makes a difference but i know trout smell a lot better than other fish so um scent could be a problem so um put them in the borax once i've done tying i'll tie a bunch you know i might do two dozen at a time um, I can usually, once you get good at it, you can get two dozen done in, in a half an hour um, with this machine if you got everything set up and you kind of plan ahead. Um, and then once I get it, once I'm done tying, then I'll take borax and I'll fill, pour another, you know, as much as I think I need, an inch to above that. Um, and then just kind of shake it up a little bit. That borax also helps cure the eggs. So these eggs are kind of soft right now, but once they sit in that borax for a day, um, or two, they'll they'll harden up just enough. They'll be just perfect um, for you to use. So, um, yeah. So that's how you tie up a spawn sack. I make small ones. Sometimes I'll make uh, when I'm fishing under a bobber, you know, like in the current or something. I will, you know, I might only put four or five eggs in there um, with no floating or anything because I fish them under a bobber, um, and then and they work pretty well. So. That's that video. You should now know how to tie spawn. The biggest challenge you'll have is catching a hen or finding spawn, especially fresh spawn. Um, I would not waste my money on that stuff that they sell at Holiday or wherever. Um, that stuff, your catch rate will drop by 25%, 25 to 50% with that junk. So um, hope you enjoyed the video, and we'll be back later.